Yep. Let's I'm do sure. it. Oh, we have an intro song at the start, by the way. Excellent. <laughs> Fucking professional shit. I love it. Did it play? Oh, that's that, the wrong that one. That's podcast, the wrong one. That's bro. my podcast one. Guys, bad start. Bad start. Oh, Talk boss, amongst you yourselves. You planned that. You planned that. Talk you amongst yourselves. All right. Take two. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 86 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Hey, no. Oh, wait, that's my podcast. No. Hang on a sec. Oh, sorry. My mistake. Welcome to Luke and Lewis, guys. <laughs> Very special episode. We're joined by a guest, Dilrook Jaya Singer. Welcome to the show, mate. How are you going? Very good. I'm excited to be on this episode, uh, not only because it's on my favorite tram number 86, but it's also potentially the breakup episode of Luke and Lewis. So I want to get straight into <laughs> yes. this. What I'm, was the okay. discussion that was apparently happening for 20 minutes, an argument that was happening? Oh, it's not a discussion. No, no, okay. I'm happy. Argument. No, it's not an argument because I don't <laughs> no, care and Luke I'm happy to concede. Wrong. Yes. No, I'm, I'm happy to concede. <laughs> no, no, you got to go step by step. Okay. I, I'm as, yeah, uh, let's start as, again. As, as deaf to this as the audience is. So let's go yeah. step by step. Okay, by the so way, I is... concede and I don't care. All right, that's my official position no, in the no, argument. No, no, <laughs> what? what, what imagine if every law, every, every Ali McBeal and all these law shows that started with, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Philadelphia. What a terrible movie would have been if he got fired. Okay. Like, you know what? He has AIDS. Fair enough. Come on board. <laughs> now, Dill, this argument was actually inspired by your head uh oh. now we saw a photo that, oh, now i'm that... now I'm, I'm i'm with luke fuck it let's move on yeah I think, <laughs> here's the thing all that's gonna come out of this is some feelings are gonna get hurt and lewis is gonna be like ah i'm a winner and is that what you want lewis <laughs> yes okay. uh, that, yes that sounds like my. Oh, let's, let's, let's just let's just put out a lot of love on the table and say we all yeah. love and respect each other and let's go from there let's okay. just, just have yeah. some friendly sparring then Okay, this is all friendly. Now, this started <laughs> off, it was inspired by a photo that you put on your Instagram, Dill. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> of you shaving your head and the top of your head looking quite bald. Yeah, um, so about a month ago, I sh uh, fully shaved, like scalped my head. And I used to do yeah. that quite a lot. Uh, like every two years or so, I used to do it. Um, mm. And then I stopped doing it because every time I wanted to, there was a reason why I needed to keep my hair long. And so it had been about maybe five years since I'd last done it. So I was always used to the idea of scalping it and then it grows back, no dramas. But this yeah. is the first time at the age of 35, I realized that it is growing back, but the bits on the top in the middle are growing back significantly uh, like slower than the sides. And that's when Thinner. it hit me, holy shit, I am thinning. And so uh, I posted the photo on Instagram almost to like just, you know, get on top of it. Pun intended. Yeah. It's it's uh, a good it's a really good plan to get ahead of the scandal. Like before yeah, people definitely. notice it, because yeah. really you could have kept that knowledge with you for another three months because you weren't well, gonna see anyone for I ages. saw I started seeing hints of it in my uh if, if you can see actually here since it's a video format, there's a little patch here that is It looks fine like, on camera. It yeah, but there's a slight patch, can you see there? Like it's mm. it looks bit, though yeah. it's kinda cool. It looks like a wound. It doesn't look like you're going bald, uh, it looks like you've been in a fight and you've yeah. won that fight it, it kind of looks shiny bloke, you look a, like a rare pokemon in a way <laughs> <laughs> well well dill in singly has been shiny so they're off to a good start there but uh mm. i i would say as a bloke who's never been in a fight like the closest i've said this on stage the closest was where a bloke was about to punch me but i must have looked so scared that he just slapped me like, he, didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even give me the respect of a bloke to bloke punch he was like nah slap and the only other time i've seen that happen <laughs> was nick cage in uh in con air when he's about to punch the effeminate guy and yeah. uh and he just feels bad so he slaps him i'm like man that's how little respect that guy who was about to punch me had for me so <laughs> what i did was uh what i've realized is that yeah it is thinning and mm. and it, it in fact before i even shaved my head i had a whole bit in my new show about the fact that my hair is thinning and because the whole show was about being grateful, right? And yeah. I, I said it was really hard to be grateful for thinning hair because I'd spent so much effort in the last couple of years of losing weight, like over 35 kilos. And I finally got my point to the, my body to the point where I can not like hate it. And now all of a sudden my hair's like, you know what? I'm going to fuck off on you now. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, getting, rough. I think the joke was like, you're getting too cocky fuckhead. So I'm going to take your <laughs> hair off you. Yeah. And so... And so I actually joked about the thinning process and all of that before I actually even realized how real it was for me. And uh, I think the only thing that I finally became grateful for was the fact that I said, you know what, and this is true, I genuinely pulled myself out of a spiral by realizing that 
oh, if my hair is thin, if my hair is thinning, that means I've lived long enough to see it thin. And I know plenty of blokes who died young with a full head of hair. And I'm sure they would have traded, you know, a few million years on earth with a balding (laughs) hair. That that is true, but I also feel like you're really scraping the barrel there, Dill. If the only thing you can come up with is, oh, well, at least I'm not fucking dead. Like, you're at the bottom there. (laughs) 100%, man. 100%. Because I used to have thick, luscious, gorgeous locks. So it's a real... Because mm. also with therapy, I spent so much time on self-loving and learning to appreciate my body, even when it was fat, so that I can learn to love it and not hate it. But I fucking didn't spend any time on my head. I just yeah. took my hair for granted that whole time. Yeah. And I didn't realize that this was going to go away so quick. And also because I'm not a bloke who had a lot of testosterone. I was the last in high school to lose, uh, like to, to, to hit puberty. I can barely grow a beard. I see you got uh, hair I don't have last chest. and lost it first. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I had a lot of balding friends early on, so I'm, I've got a little bit of ahead of it. But That's I just good. used to take pride in the thickness of them. I really genuinely yeah. would look at it going, fucking, that is beautiful. Do so you I reckon if- you'll enter the realm of being one of Australia's bald comedians like Jim Owen, Cal Barron? Mm, Do you think yeah. that's a future for you? Or are you going to try and get some hair loss type? Thing going well, on. I, I put it out there yesterday on Instagram that, you know, is Ashley Martin uh, uh, advanced yeah. hair? You're asking <laughs> for a sponsor. A great... Yeah, yeah. And so it was really interesting to hear the the DMs that came through about p- from people who worked for those companies and heard the real stories. And basically the consensus is, this is in case... I'm, is I'm the talking... consensus, hang on, Is this is my hypothesis, yeah. shame yeah. porn, sorry, not shame porn, shame, shame worn. Porn? <laughs> shame porn! <laughs> shame porn! <laughs> Shane Porn. Shane Porn. You're like, and Shane Warne. That's like an Eminem I just rhyme. associate him with hot <laughs> fucking in my head. No, uh, Shane Warn <laughs> yeah. is wearing a toupee. Is that the truth? Oh, I don't know about... Oh, well, this is what... Because that would be a fucking hot scoop for this show that if really that's the was. case. Someone said uh, that... I think it was... So this is, you know, uh, let's go with allegedly because I don't know if I can get sued over this shit because I've named them specifically. But mm. well, that's all we've been going whenever we talk about George Pell. So I think it works. <laughs> oh, if shit. it doesn't, we're fucked. <laughs> I, for- I forgot who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't well, really you have to say about advance here, allegedly <laughs> on this show. <laughs> yes. No, I. Uh, yeah, I think what they said is there might be slight results in certain uh, for these two particular that, but they are super expensive. The bang for your buck is very little, and also yeah. as soon as you stop it, it fucks off again. So it's almost right. like right. you're better off embracing it. I think the best was when I think Tom that's Gle- true. Well, the yeah. argument so, that Luke yeah. and I were having was yeah. was Luke said, "Why don't you say what you said, Luke?" And then I'll I say said, what I think. Um, and I was just speaking off like my mates who have gone bald, right? Mm-hmm. Which they've gone bald pretty young. Like I'm 24. That is very early. Um, I've got a few mates who have shaved it already. And yeah, yeah, yeah right. Uh, what my experience was when they shave it, right? So they had a pretty good head of hair. One of them was like, we didn't even call it. He shaved his head as a laugh and then it never grew back yeah, yeah, yeah. on top. And I said, oh, it seems like when you shave your head, it, it sometimes it just doesn't come back as a male. Right. And then Lewis said, that's bullshit. Hair will grow back the same. So I did some research. Now, Lewis is correct, I think. But mm. but also, it all, I also read some stuff that said uh, shaving yeah. can lead to irritation, which then, yeah, can ruin the hair so, follicles and Luke, damage well, your hair. I've, I've got irritation. So, so it's like, dude, pubes. the internet, there's there's Usually evidence on every side. Pube, that's some irritation for me when I shave <laughs> yeah. it. But, but, yeah, uh, Luke was saying that when you shave, it doesn't come back. But I was saying that, no, it was never there. When you shave uh-huh. it, it just But you had a nice head obvious. of hair. Did you notice that you were thinning before this? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like I started to notice that, you know, there was uh, bits for... When I came out of the shower, like say yeah. two years ago, I could never see my scalp unless I parted yeah. it. Whereas now I started noticing that when I came out of the shower, that there was more scalp visible, even when I had my thick, luscious hair. So True. I started to notice it thinning. So I, I have to agree with Lewis there because as someone who did regularly shave, mm. go full scalp once every two years it would grow back and there was no real notice. It's only in the last, say, five years or so that I've noticed that it is thinning and it's now growing back yeah. slower because it's the hair that was, as Louis said, was never there. Well, so maybe my mate was just about to go bald yeah, and yeah, no I one realized so. it. Because, like, yeah. he he was like, dude, it's not growing back. It's been three months. <laughs> what the... F-? Like, he was panicking. <laughs> yeah, but, because <laughs> it's like... Because it's, if you think about shaving, you just 
cutting the top off. Right? Yeah, I You're just thought like, it out. I yeah. just thought yeah. maybe yeah. like some young guys. I was like, fuck. It seems like to me from looking at my mates, like fucking once you go, it's not coming back, champ. So enjoy it while you have it, kind of thing. Mm. That's good advice, though. Enjoy it while you have it. Is yeah, I, good advice I'm in a weird position where where I everyone thinks that I've been going bald since I was 18 because nice. I have so- solar panel forehead. Huge forehead oh, really? and the Dracula hairline. People think that I've been going bald. My hairline yeah. hasn't moved since I started, but everyone's telling me, bro, your hairline's receding. Right, it hasn't moved. Right. My grandfather yeah. is 80 years old. He has a full head of hair. I'm never going to go bald, I think, but I am always going to look like I am going bald. So that's my <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm not going bald. Yeah, and everyone yeah, thinks yeah. I'm one of those guys that are lying about it. It's like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm never going to go bald, but fuck, He's I just am going to look, look like, like I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing, I, I am. Really. I'm also fortunate. My my granddad passed away at 92 with a full head of hair. And Is uh, your mum's side or your dad's side? Uh, dad's and also m- mum's father did as well. So I think I'm set. I think the uh-huh, the genes okay. are behind me. But right. also like you know, I feel like if I was going balding, I'd kind of do a Matt O'Kine and just become a cap guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, hey guys, I'm, I'm cap guy. What's up? I didn't I'm already cap Matt guy. Matt was bald for about six years until he removed the cap, and I was like, oh, I thought you just loved hats. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, when I perform stand up, I'm always about the suit jacket. Like, I, yeah. I everything everything under the jacket is exactly the same year after year. It's a black you're gonna have to wear a beret or something. Well, that- <laughs> <laughs> Or a fedora. I yeah. finally reclaimed the fedora from, <laughs> from all that. Yeah, it's, it's no longer for adventure archaeologists. It is for mm. comedians well, wait, as well. Maybe I'll just embrace, you know, the ethnic stereotype. Go full turban. Like, just <laughs> uh, culturally appropriate Indian turban. Oh, my grandparents are Indian, so maybe I can use that. So, yeah, I'll just go hardcore and just, you know, go full head wobble and, and <laughs> you know, just yeah. really lean into it. But I, I think work. this is the other thing in terms of like, you know, when you're feeling shit, I, that's that's one of the things that I'm good at is I'm, I'll scrape the bottom of the barrel till I find something to pull me out of that, uh, you know, out of that spiral. The same way I've been watching that Michael Jordan documentary and he's such a fucking psychopath that he will find anything to fire himself up. Like he would, you know, imagine stories about someone saying something bad to him just to fuel him to work harder. He's a psycho and I love it. So my equivalent of that is I am such a positive person that I will manufacture positivity where it doesn't even exist. See, so Lewis so will do the Michael Jordan night. method. Yeah. Uh, Lewis yeah, is the type of person me, to manufacture sure. negativity. He goes, fuck it, I swear to God he was thinking this. And it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. whoa. <laughs> He probably wasn't, man. Calm down. Not everyone. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter because at, 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 at any doesn't matter Dude. what they were thinking. As long as it's negative, I'm moving forwards. I'm fueled by the, that. Right. The, right. the amount so of just, times I have to say to Lewis, you think a bit much of yourself if you think these people care about you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that, that's a really interesting lesson because I, I, I think there's fuel in each of every one of them, like in both those ideas. So for me, when I did the... Uh, I did a marathon last year and up until like the 30 kilometers, right? I was fueled by the positivity of yeah. me thinking about the fact that, or, or, you know, year, like 20 months ago, I couldn't run 100 meters. I'm like, this is so amazing. I can't believe I made this transformation. Looking at people with cancer running, like they would, with signs saying survived cancer, a dad yeah. pushing a, a, a disabled child as he's doing a marathon, like all these positivities fueling me. It was awesome. But at the 35 kilo mark, all of that waned and I was just left with pure cunt and I was just getting <laughs> fueled by all That's spite. Good. Like I'm like, That's if good. I was Out to of the stop way, now- Baldy. Get yeah, this yeah. hair off the track. <laughs> Lose your hair the proper way, mate. <laughs> like <how> I am. <laughs> not, not through your treatment. Like all kinds of like, you just, because it's like, it was a new resource I had to tap into because I was, because yeah. really, I had seven more kilometers to go. My body is depleted of energy and I still had what I consider a long way to go, seven kilometers. I'm like, well, if I stop now, that means all those people who told me I can't do it get proven right. So yeah. I could not let them have that win. So I had to tap into that. So I think if you, if you know you, can, you have that in the back pocket, that's mm. for me at least, 
it's something I use, and I use, use it even in comedy as well. There was a lot of people that told me I was quite, and I was, to be fair, quite shit when I started. But I love that that occasionally when I feel like throwing in the towel and not going for a gig, I'm like, no, if I don't, that person gets proven right. So I better go and put the hard work That's in. That's right. That's what I do every day. I wake up in the morning <laughs> and I check my list with full of quotes and names and I go, fuck all of them. And then I start my day. I have <laughs> yeah, my breakfast. Yeah, yeah. It's like my favorite artist is Eminem. And i yeah. so inspired by him, but I want to do everything but be like, like him which is someone who i think that's really, fair man he is at his best when he's angry and like as mm. you guys know me i'm i it's rare for me to really get too angry and i'm yeah i'm it. shocked that you like eminem that much it's, it's not oh, your it's, vibe I'm at all I'm upset. Look, i even have like it's like my favorite <laughs> <laughs> this is not your vibe at all eminem Yo. thrives when he's angry like eminem reached a state he got off all the drugs he reached mm. a state of happiness he put out an album and the whole world went boo this sucks <laughs> get addicted to pills again yeah yeah exactly and that's that's why i find I, I think that's what people forget that you can be inspired by people who you have nothing in common with like i i think about his early albums a lot about his you know traumatic childhood his estranged father the you know the the lawsuits with his mom and all that and i and i loved him as a 14 year old and i had nothing in common with him my parents yeah. are happy they they did nothing but support me like you know, i used to get angry at them when i started comedy when dad be like oh do you need help with rent i'm like come on man let me be a struggling artist like yeah. you know yeah. no no good art came from support and nurturing you know? yeah, that's, yeah, that's why that's i'm a, a fucking point. terrible comedian you know because my parents really love me a lot and they yeah. the, they gave me a lot of money and that's you know, <laughs> no, they I had to move to yeah. Frankston just to, just to, on the off chance I might get stabbed you know that's a good 20 minutes huh yeah exactly just for material yeah yeah I think yeah finding what fuels you with it and, and having that negativity in resource I think I use it like I, I, I use the example of in Fast and the Furious the Nos tank that you just you can't use it all the time <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I don't like yeah. I actually don't like what I become when I get competitive like it's a side of yeah. me that I didn't know I had because I never played sport as a kid I was just this uh, fat kid who ate and drank right yeah and then and then suddenly I started looking into fitness and trying to get healthy and I realized there's a really competitive streak in me that <laughs> that I'm I'm not comfortable with like I yeah I, I tap into something that I'm, I, I hate but that's and, what sport is essentially yeah but sport, as a kid, helps you control it and let, lets, lets you, True. you know, channel it. Whereas if you're a 35-year-old, 33, when I started, you don't know who you are. Like, it's almost like I'm only two years into understanding what an art, like, what a what competitiveness is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, because yeah. for the years before that, I was like, if I don't try, I can't fail. So I'm just going to yeah. stay happy and positive and optimistic by not pushing myself. Like I push myself in certain areas, but they were all kind of like individual kind of things. But in terms of actual competing against someone else, that's a side of me that I'm, ugh, I, I don't know what to do with sometimes. And I'm like, well, you, you I'm talk about that it. a lot in um, like the positivity and, and stuff in yeah. your new comedy special, which is out now on Amazon Prime. Congratulations, mate. Thanks, One of the man. first Australian comedians to get a special on a big network. That's huge. Oh man, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, my dad was the first. Thanks, Betty. And my dad first asked me, he's like, "Are you the Are you the first Sri Lankan to get a special on Amazon?" I'm like, "Fuck, I might be, Dad." Probably. Like, might be. <laughs> yeah, because Nat Nazim Hussein, who has got his Sri Lankan heritage, he's on Netflix, so he's got that covered. Doesn't count. Of- Fuck it. <laughs> Good. And next, uh, you know, fucking that sucks try and beat him to stand, man. You just just get one on there. Yeah, like Luke and I, we're never going to be the first white people. I know, like I can't be the first straight white male to do anything because all um, I can be is the tallest. We've been comedian. killing it for years, so <laughs> you, got, you got tallest comedian, Kijo. You, you, you the got whitest, a- basic, most privileged. I don't know, uh, all of the above. <laughs> Matt, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have supportive parents. Yeah, one who received the most love as a child, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the first guy to get a Netflix deal and rock up to the taping wearing a cotton on t-shirt. Oh, for sure. I would never spend over thirty dollars on a t-shirt that I wear on a comedy special, mate. I'm not fucking. I'm not. I don't have an ego. Um, Sorry, Lou. You were saying something about uh, positive in the in the special. Oh, I just I was just wanted to talk about the special. I think that's yeah. really cool that that you've done that. How did that come about? Uh, So I think it was, it obviously came through my management who had, I think, negotiated and spoke to Amazon directly behind the scenes and then 
you know, they, they said they're one of the uh, people that they want to work with. So as soon as I got the, the offer, it was exciting, but it's fascinating how quickly you snap into uh, panic mode as well, because all of a sudden you overthink everything. Like you boys who've both recorded stuff know that when you're performing live to a live audience that exists in that night, there's a lot more, I don't know, creative freedom. I guess you feel you're, you're yeah. a lot more playful, heaps yeah. more playful. But as soon as the cameras came on, the amount of like, yeah, it was like, I'm overthinking everything. So there's actually a solid, the first 10 minutes of the actual taping, because we only taped it once. Uh, oh, only one. That's scary. See, this is what I was telling Lewis before, because we have we talked about this one night after a gig, Deal Rock, and yeah. uh, I was saying to you, I'm like, oh, you're like, how did you enjoy your special? I was like, ah, oh, look, I taped it once. I'd probably do it again differently, which uh-huh. I've talked about. And you were like, man, uh, I, I, I felt super uncomfortable about it too. I watched your special. You can't tell at all, man. I had right. to... Com- I had completely you look great. put I completely Thank put you. the middle twenty minutes at the front of my special because I was so nervous and you can tell. So I <laughs> yeah, switched right, right. the order. So here here's you know, full full disclosure. Like so this is what I was leading up to. So we taped it only once and we uh, the in the first ten minutes of the live rec what we recorded live, there's only uh, I think about two minutes that went to air. The other ah, eight minutes okay. had to get wow. cut because it was a, it wasn't like essential to the because I recorded in one hundred one hour twenty, so I needed to cut it back for twenty minutes anyway. But it was so noticeably nervousness right. that was like, well, that's was, why we didn't was, see it. It was just completely yeah, removed, completely just pulled out because. Yeah. And so why it almost picks up from is a bit from where I fucked up a line or something like that, yeah. and I had to reset. I wanted. I was like, oh look, I'm going to do that bit again, and then. Oh, true. Because uh, if you only have one taping. If you fuck up a line, you have to walk it back and go, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I need to reset that up. Yeah. And I did that like, once, I think. But it was super weird. The audience was like, what? You can't do why yeah, are you, so you doing can't use, You can't use it too often because yeah. then they stop trusting the... Uh, they the realize that, that, that is- they're being filmed. Well, that's actually, that's a good point. I didn't even think of it like that. You're right. They become a bit more aware of their themselves. But I think it's more about the beautiful thing about live comedy is the element of danger because you're seeing something yes. happen and it could go any way, uh, which you kind of lose when you're watch, sitting back in the comfort of your home. Yeah. You know you know that if it's taped and put to air, it went, it was fine. You know, that danger is hard to yeah, really true. capture sometimes in a, in a taping. But if the crowd in there keeps going, oh, well, if he fucks up, he's just going to get reset. There, there's a weird relaxing off. Yeah. I don't know. It just, you lose some of that. A bit that, more fake. That, that, <laughs> yes. And, and uh, polished and, and, and uh, refined. And that's not yeah. what I like in terms of stand-up comedy. So I couldn't use it too often. But because I fucked up, because I acknowledged it, and then I actually did a bit of crowd work and played with the crowd around the idea of me fucking up and saying, oh my God, you know, all this shit that Amazon spent money on and you hear seeing a guy yeah. fumble and his biggest opportunity or something like that, I was playing around. That weirdly turned the tables on myself where I went, oh, you fucked up now. So now we're back to a normal gig. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It yeah. was like, it wasn't this thing that in my head I'd built up as being, it had to be perfect. It had to be perfect. Only one shot, you know, Eminem lied to me and lose yourself. You don't get one shot. You get multiple shots. Apparently you just have to <laughs> <laughs> reset. Yeah. Just got to so, repeat the line. You know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon so, you did that whole song in one take? Fucking poser. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Will Anderson actually pointed out that the whole point of the movie is that he, uh, he actually fucks up at the start and he gets his second shot later on. So the yeah. whole premise yeah. of eight mile is about someone getting a second shot. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's you really True. undid your entire chorus with that one premise of the film but um yeah i, I think i think that was a a, a very uh, like a, i wasn't being uh, flippant when i said that i you know i was really nervous and stuff it's true it's just that i yeah. just took it out so you pick it up from where I, where i'm more comfortable yeah. in how i perform i suppose closer to real life but even within that lou we were talking about this just before uh before we hit record that learning to let go of uh there's a particular chunk that i know i've done man i reckon ah, fuck, 150 times yeah uh, and about 120 of those times were better than what got taped and i have to just let go it's rough yeah you just gotta let that, it go yeah yeah and so going back to that gratitude model that i run off right which was me just going oh well like you know your worst day uh, your worst delivery on an amazon special is probably better than most days anyway so just be happy that you yeah, even got yeah. to fuck up in a you know in a taping so that's in itself is a privilege to be upset I, about that i think what's um 
what I what I'd like to ask is yeah. I think that in Australia with the stand up comedy where it, it's it's in such a strange position where uh, in America all of these people are getting specials and stuff, but in Australia, it's like, what? It's got to be less than 10 still, even after the huge amount of people that just got them on Amazon Prime. Yeah. I feel like it's it's like something that everyone here has been chasing, but also has been viewed as a little bit impossible because these are all American networks. How do you, uh-huh. d- how do you feel like shit has changed since you've gotten this thing that's seen as such a big thing by other people? Do you think much has changed or... Is What's it just happened? another thing that's out there? I, for me personally, it's hard to gauge the change of any sort in Australia because of the fact that we're in lockdown. So it came out, you know, a month after we no were in shit. lockdown. So I don't, so I don't really know what impact because there's no, they don't give you any stats. You don't know how many yeah. people have seen it. I can only go off on the on the messages that I get from people who've watched it. Mm. But personally, for me, the big, big, the big, big win about all of this. Is was the ability to watch something at the same time as my brother did in India and my mum and dad in Sri Lanka, my yeah. classmates who live in the UK and the New Zealand and, and the USA. Like there was these people that all you know I've been in touch with over the years. Like well, I've been in touch with mum and dad. What a big fucking shocker! No, I like my fam, like my my friends and and classmates and stuff who really wanted to see me perform never got the chance finally got a chance to see me and yeah. then having them give me feedback, like, you know, chatting to them about yeah. what I've been doing for the last, you know, nine years or so. That to me was a big, big, big moment to have, you know, uh, my dad's, you know, sister-in-law's brother in, in California yeah, cool. messaging him saying, and, and it's really interesting because um, I forgot how much I share in the thing because <laughs> going back to where we operate, right? In, in, it's in yeah. a live comedy room. It gets very the personal, big, you're special. Yeah, the, well, the biggest <laughs> audience we like for me at least is maybe the comics lounge 400 people right so yeah. that's as intimate that's as big as it gets for me so this is all of a sudden dad's high school buddies watching yeah. me talking about sticking my dick in a vacuum cleaner i'm like <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck i did not anticipate that and and it was really it was actually quite funny because i asked uh well dad when i spoke to dad he was like oh man he's like i can't believe it. i'm so proud of you and you know being the supportive guy he is and he's like almost he was actually tearing up as he was saying it he said i can't believe you know you get to see your name on this streaming service all that and i said where's mom and he goes oh she's throwing out the vacuum cleaner she'll be back (laughs) 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 so it's just like i was like oh yeah that's right fuck i forgot i revealed this stuff about me shitting my pants and all these awful things that well that's one thing i wanted to bring up i watched the special last night and dude it it felt like i've never seen you that vulnerable like i've seen you perform a lot and i've never seen you do those two bits which were the two most probably vulnerable bits of the special, which is you fucking a vacuum cleaner and then you being so drunk you shit yourself in a public bathroom and right. have to ditch your pants. <laughs> and and um, I, I was just going to say, like, I, I don't know, I've gotten pretty personal and stuff on podcasts, uh-huh. but I don't think I've ever got that personal in a room in front of 500 strangers. Was that daunting at first doing that bit about sticking your yeah. dick in a vacuum? That the, the vacuum ones from last year's show and the pants one is from like 2016, I think. Mm. And the 2016 is a specific is it, it, there's a story behind it, which is that in 2015 I got reviewed by a critic who was whose reviews I generally respect. So this was my second ever show, and basically the review was like, hey. This guy is very likable. The crowd's on his side from the get-go and he doesn't do anything with it. It's a kind of a wasted... Uh, like he, It was a negative review, but he, well, the one positive he said is that he's got the ability to get the crowd on side very mm-hmm. quickly. So I took it like a, as, because I do appreciate what his usual feedback has been for other comics and stuff. I thought, okay, let me think about that a bit and see if I can flip it. And so the following year, the show that I did, I took basically about five or six stories that when they happened, I was like, I wish no one ever found out about this. So one was me sticking my... Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, no, no, not, not the vacuum cleaner, sorry. So yeah, so the the challenge for me in 2016 was to tell a bunch of stories that when they happened, I would never want to do it again. Uh, I didn't want anyone to find out. And one of them was me shitting my pants. And, and it was like that. It was about like how I once got caught, you know, comedian Pete Jones. So Pete Jones saw me come out of a port with a plate of food in my hand. Like it was, I was off my head <laughs> and I could, you know, so things like all these stories that I was like, oh, Pete, please don't tell anyone about it. But of course, that's not how we, I was like, you know what? I need to, yeah. I need to own this. Yeah. So I told a whole bunch of stories that like were embarrassing. I even talked about how 
when I saw like a group of black kids, how my immediate thought was, oh my God, they, they, they're up to no good. Like even things like that. Like mm. I was just revealing all well, the Well, that's not embarrassing. Isn't from... that what we all think? <laughs> yeah. But I just <laughs> felt bad to admit it to admit to it. Right? So I, <laughs> yeah. kind of, I kind of just decided to put yeah. them all in the one hour and see how likable I truly am. And so the following that's ballsy. Review. Imagine if the next year's review was okay. He took my advice a bit too literally. I didn't need to know <laughs> that shit. <laughs> I liked him last year. This new deal is an asshole and a <laughs> racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the point is we have racist thoughts. Whether we yeah, act yeah. on it is different. But yeah, I yeah. So he literally kicks off the review by saying, "I can't. Uh, how how likable is this guy if he's able to talk about these things and still have the the you know be one of the most adorable comedians or some shit like that?" I'm like, "Fucking!" I felt like a huge win yeah. because it's yeah. like literally his you know negative feedback that I spun and and to be honest, kind of informs the way I perform now. So something like that vacuum cleaner story is something that I saw. Um, it was Celia Pocola's stand-up special, uh, stand-up show from the year before, which she actually does in the Amazon thing about mm. why guys don't stick their dick in their vacuum cleaners. It's beyond it. She's like, that's all I'd be doing. And I was watching that going, oh, fuck, I've done that. I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and I was like, can I like get to the point where I can admit to doing that and tell the story about it? I'm like, let's just try it. Let's just try it. Because I now have that awareness that, you know, we all have different strengths in what we do. And some people are great writers. Some people are great performers. Some people can push boundaries and stuff like that. For me, Luke, as you said, it's, it's, I guess I, I've learned to be comfortable sharing some really fucked up stuff from my life because now I have the confidence that I mm. can still, I have some skill in being able to share that without pushing the audience too far away. But still, yeah. like if you if you were to single like list out the things I talk about, it's pretty fucked. Like in fact, there was a di- there was a director who helped me with the Amazon special, an amazing guy called Todd Abbott. And he literally the day before the recording had a call to me. He goes, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm looking at your set list. And he's like, do you think we need to have the story about you sticking a toothbrush up your asshole? Uh, <laughs> or do you think we can we can get rid of it? I'm like, well, why do we ever get rid of it? It's one of my funniest bits. He goes, yeah, but, you know, we've got a lot of smart already. You got your shit in your pants. You got your... <laughs> like, yeah. So we're doing like a, a... It was a really good note because I kept the bit in because it had a lot of laughs. But off the back of all this other stuff, he's like, ah, we're kind of really losing a lot. Like, you know, do we really need another yeah. story about you being uh, uh, another story about your asshole, basically? <laughs> so, yeah. so I was like, you know what? Yeah, fair enough. That's a good note. And I said to him, I said, I promise. I said, OK, look, let's tape it as is uh, uh, with the new version. But if at the end of it, I st- once we say thank you, good night, I just want to do that bit in isolation sorry hate that word now but just do that bit on its own after the show is finished to the crowd and if we need it we can just plop it in somewhere in, yeah, the, in yeah. the hour you know what i mean just as a backup but uh, i actually didn't end up doing it because i was like you know what that hour went pretty good i'm happy with that you know yeah, yeah so, uh, I-, I thought it was uh, it was such a good special man and it was one of those things where because you did i think it was a good call because because you did talk about a new thing every five to ten minutes it just kept me in the whole time I was oh, like great, yeah, yeah. pissing myself. And then uh, and then my girlfriend left to go to the toilet like for a bit. Then she came back like a few minutes later and you were halfway through the bit about talking about sticking your dick in a vacuum cleaner. And she just goes, what the, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> How did we get from because here to here? I think <laughs> she's met you once. It was that one time right. we went out for dinner um, a while back at that like 24 hour restaurant. So she, all she knows of you is like, oh yeah, uh, Luke's friend Dilrock, yeah, a good comedian, blah, blah, blah. Just walking in on you on the TV talking yeah. about fucking a vacuum cleaner and you going, oh. <laughs> yeah. It was very confronting well, to hear the second one- end of that bit. <laughs> There was an awesome night at the comedy festival last year when about 20 of the people from that, no, about 10 of the people from that baseball club showed up on the same night oh, and, that would have uh, off. And, and getting to perform it to them. And then at the end of the night announcing, oh, by the way, you know, the, yeah. the team I talked to you about, they're all here at the back or whatever. And, and then chatting to them afterwards, uh, they told me stuff that I had blocked out. <laughs> there was like <laughs> other elements to the story Jeez. that I and and so I can I guess I'll share with you guys because I I couldn't find a way to make at least I didn't have time to make it work on stage. But one of the things is apparently it was because the force of it was so strong and I was screaming. My friend Tony had to come in and separate me and my dick from the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh no! And, and then Tony he, got covered in cum. It was a mess. 
Well, Tony's a nurse, so he was fine. He's dealt with worse. But the fact that he had to like physically... <laughs> but, yeah, no friend ha- should ha- ever have to do that to another right, friend. Right, right. Even if you don't want to be uncoupling your mate. Yeah, yeah from yeah, a Dyson. Said, like... <laughs> Separate, as he said, you had to separate knob from shaft, you know? Uh, sorry, yeah. like a, shaft from shaft. That's how he yeah. said you had to separate shaft from shaft. Yeah, you were but docking yeah, with I'm- a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe that was the line I needed. All right, I'm gonna, if you're going to borrow that off you, Luke. Oh, you go for it. <laughs> I was docking the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> um, so, Dilrook, I did want to discuss. So, people, I think most people will be familiar with your work. If you don't know, Dilrook is uh, a regular and have you been paying attention Uh Utopia, which you won a you you won a gold logie. Oh no, a, a logie, no, 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 not no, a gold silver, logie. Silver logie. I don't know how the logies logie. work, man. Yeah, it's, it's only um, one gold and the rest is silver. <laughs> I'm a young person, dude. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> man, I, I didn't know either until I won one. So. Dude, it was <laughs> no, but how how incredible! I just thought that that's so cool that like as a young comedian, it is cool because they kind of go to actors usually and TV mm. stars. It was yeah. very cool to see someone who like. Well, yeah, I do stand up with and stuff going like, oh, you're being recognized on a mainstream level uh, for yeah. the work you're doing. I thought it was very cool. And I think a lot of people at the time were like, oh, it's possible to not be a failure. Um, yeah, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. Like, honestly, it was something that went from because the way the process it works awesome. behind the scenes is like there's about like 30 people up for the category. Or yeah. whatever, and then they narrowed down to five. And then from there. So it's all voting based, but my category was, uh, which was new talent, popular new talent. And then the final thing is a pure voting thing. And when the votes first, when the five were narrowed down, the uh, sports bet odds for me were like $21 uh, to win. Really? And I was, I, was, I was lowest. I was absolute lowest. And for some reason, my mate in Perth got a, he just, he was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm backing this guy. Put like 500 bucks on me. Oh, he would have won 10 paying. grand. I think it was it was paying fourteen at the time, maybe after a certain okay. point. Okay, and then uh, and then what happened? So the the things that I think worked for me was uh, firstly Utopian. Have you been paying attention? You know, Working Dog that that has its own popularity. Uh, then the Little Dum Dum Club podcast. Yeah. They got behind me, and they got their their fans to get uh, on board with me. And then there was uh, the Sri Lankan community, right? Uh, the uh, uh, there's a, uh, there's a uh, Sri Lankan privilege. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> there was this um, this event that I did uh, called Lankan Fest a few months before that. For, for yeah. like, it's like a, a big festival all, along the Crown, uh, the that boulevard, the uh, the river uh, in South Bank, South Bank Boulevard. And uh, and I did it for free. You know, I was like happy to support or whatever. And the bloke who ran that was like, "Oh man, you know, you supported us uh, for free. What what can I do for you?" I'm like, "Oh, can you just maybe you know put it on your Facebook page?" And that Facebook page has like twenty thousand, you know. Yeah. subscribers or whatever so i think those three factors uh definitely helped me but what was the best part about it was i was sitting on five thousand instagram followers i'll never forget this five thousand verses on this in the same category was uh sam frost from neighbors who had five hundred thousand so <laughs> and just she like, was promoting it as well like from memory she was like oh you vote for me in the logies or whatever yeah yeah and it actually it was maddie J from the bachelor he was sitting next to me and he, um, he actually, he, so we were both up against the same category, uh, up for the same category. And, was, and for some reason, they plopped us next to each other. And um, he actually revealed on a radio interview that someone had told him beforehand that, you know, early on, if you've won, because you start to notice that uh, the cameras come towards you. Yeah. So he starts ah. seeing the cameras come towards our table and he goes, oh, fuck, I've won it. And then they go, Duruk Jaising, and he's like, fuck, I forgot about this guy. <laughs> you know what? I think if this proves anything, it's that, yeah, like, yes, you're obviously uh, doing great work on TV, but if it proves anything, it proves that no matter what, no one will ever give a fuck about a Bachelor contestant. That's like, right. Period. <laughs> like, Matty J, he seems like a great guy. He's Sam a Frost. He's a lovely guy, him and his partner. There was, there was of so course. Lovely to seems, it, yeah. seems like an awesome guy, but it's not his fault, but, you know, there's just no one will ever care. But yeah, it was it was pretty uh, it was fucking rad. I was I was so uh, genuinely one of the happiest memories for me because I think it was one of those things that I would have never even you know you have certain goals for yourself when you start out in a career or whatever. Yeah. that yeah. was not even one of them. Like no. that was so far like it's it's no uh, comedian's I, goal really to it's never yeah. even in the ballpark of what you think you want to do. It's like win a logie is not a 
No, ago. no, it's so far removed. Like but, it was only I think at that point it was just me and Rove. I think was the yeah. stand-ups who had won Logies. Everyone else had been nominated and stuff. But you, it's it still yeah. goes to television people. But I think since then we've had Tom Gleason and Luke McGregor as well since then. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it is a thing that I would like genuinely like. You know, it, it was a real balance between. You know, just because it's not something you ever dreamed of or wanting doesn't make it not any cool. But but it also yeah. just because you want it, it meant that it didn't mean that I you know kicked up my legs on my on the table and I just continued with what I did, what I want to do, which is stand up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's almost like the Venn diagram between winning that and the importance of it versus being able to kill at the Exford on a Thursday night. It's so little. Like it is like yeah. I didn't really have any material. But also that's probably about. a harder goal than to win a yeah. Loki. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, Killing yeah, at the yeah. Exford on a Thursday. If you don't know, it's a very it's a notorious gig. But it's yeah. just notorious for being shit. And uh I think I dude, I did it right before it was one of the last gigs I did before quarantine, which is not a good way to <laughs> fucking good. end it and a year dry spell. <laughs> just like all all the Exford is is me doing a bit then going all right, so that was a new bit. Um, and then I just keep going and I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll uh, well, and that, have another and that, big that, day of writing tomorrow. <laughs> and to be honest, that's why I love that we get to do what we do because of that. That You're so easily humbled. Oh, dude. Yeah, you're so for sure. Easily Guys, and I just want to like fucking laugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. My, I think my, Mike Tyson said something like, if you're not humble, humbleness will find you. It's like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like it will come at you. So you, yeah. I love, I love, I mean, uh, look, you and I, we run into each other heaps at the, the, the tough rooms because yeah. there's nothing that makes a, a, a new bit you know, put through the ringer than a front of 10 drunk backpackers who do not give a shit about yeah. who you are or what you've achieved before this. But It's all about in that moment, does the joke work or not? But Derek, yeah. there's nothing also that boosts me up afterwards when a Logie winner goes, no, nah, I thought it was all right. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you know, I appreciate that, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true though. Because as a fellow performer who's watching each other, yeah. you can go, oh, I see the workings of what you're trying to achieve. Fuck this crowd. Forget what they yeah, were thinking. Yeah. I think you're onto something, and that yeah. in itself, I think, is a nice profile. I, I think that's probably what I miss the most. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think as much as I miss performing live, I miss eating the shit. Hangouts. I truly <laughs> no, no, miss no, no, eating no, no, shit yeah. in front of strangers. I don't know. There's something that I will always love about it. I think even if I was doing arenas, maybe once I'd still rock up to the Exford for a laugh to be like, let's see if this shit's good. There's, you know what? You There's know? something <laughs> fucking magical in spending a week writing a bit and then traveling 40 minutes to the city in the cold and rain and going through all of these hours of effort and planning your whole week around this one five minutes and then going up and then one stranger goes, ah, and then you yeah. go all the <laughs> way home and you're like, fuck, is this what I should be doing? There's something magical yeah, well, in that. Yeah, and, and again, the fact that those are those questions that I think more, more so than any other industry, I don't know, maybe there is, but like you constantly have to ask yourself that question. Do you still yeah. really want to do this? And yeah. you're like, fuck, yeah, I do. Like Seinfeld's new special, 23 Hours to Kill, there's a great little bit where he goes, you you know, we've got to know each other over the last so many years. You You, know, you guys know me to know that I don't need to be here. <laughs> it's like, I, I really yeah. don't need to yeah. be here so the fact that i'm here tells you that i actually want to be here like it's like That's true. Yeah, it's such a true thing like that guy has so much money so much respect he does not need to perform and write new shit but the process of coming up with the idea making it funny and then telling it to people is so fucking addictive to someone yeah. like him as well that he still does it and it's uh i i love that 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 I love that we get to do it. Like it, it doesn't matter whether it's in front of you know the four hundred people at the lounge, comics lounge, or the ten back, back, backpackers at, at Exford. That part of the process cannot be taken away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's the same. It doesn't matter how good you are. Often, when yeah. you have a new idea, no matter how great and hilarious it will become, when you first yeah. do it, you're a shit comedian again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're constantly resetting. Yeah. And like my worst, I, I would say one of the worst bombs I've ever had I, I, is 21st of September, 2013. I still remember. <laughs> it must have been so bad if you remember. It was 
<laughs> it happened on a Saturday and I was still working as an accountant then and I couldn't go to work on Monday because I was like so down from Saturday's gig. I actually was like, this is the weird thought I had in my head. I'm like, that was such a bad bomb. If I get out of the Duna, that bomb exists. But if I hide <laughs> under the Duna, Jesus. it's my little bunker and the bomb can stay, you know, out there. It's not what inside the Duna. What made it so bad? So what made it bad was it was uh, it was actually the three year anniversary of my first ever gig, right? And it was that's why I remember the date. Not a good well. day to bomb, right? And I used it was at the Comics Lounge again. I know it keeps popping up, but my first ever gig was at the Comics Lounge in front of twenty people on a Tuesday night. And yeah. this was three years later. I'm the support spot. The headliner was Fiona Lachlan. The MC was big Joel opportunity. Creasy. First time I'm getting paid at the lounge, right? It was my first paycheck. Huge. Uh, but you know. All of it was big. And I used to be someone meticulously would write out the set list every day, even though I knew it was the same set list every day. I yeah. Just as a ritual, I would write, uh, you know, the, what, I'm, what, what the order I'm going to be doing it in with my, in my notebook. That day, I just wrote, just have fun, cunt, right? And I literally <laughs> just wrote that and circled it. And I went out and I had, I swear, <laughs> at, at the time, at the time, the best... The best starting seven minutes I've ever had because I must have been in such a great headspace yeah. about just embracing. Could not believe that I'm at the same venue that I started at, getting yeah. paid to do it finally. It was all like just just pure love. And at the seven minute mark, I got cocky and I thought I'll try a new bit. Oh no, <laughs> and, I've done that before new... at the lounge. And, Never and a good in, my, call. in my in my head as well. So I'm only three years in, by the way. Remember how raw. Like, yeah. not only was I not good enough to do this bit today, maybe, but I was barely even able to do it back three then. Three years in, about... never go off script. Never go off script. The first time I'm doing the fucking weekend crowd at the comics lounge. And, <laughs> weekend but also, too. Yeah, it was a five minute bit. And in my defense, here's the, here's the slight defense. I had tried it on the Monday night earlier at the lounge again, and uh, it went well. So I felt, yeah. you know what? It went well on Monday. I'm going to give this a go because this, this crowd's eating out of the palm of my hands. I'm fucking the king of comedy at the moment. This yeah. will be fine. And it was a five minute bit. And in my head, I went, you know what's five minutes? Even if you bomb, you still got eight minutes to recover. So it's a 20 minute spot, right? And I had eight minutes of gold left to go. So I then do the five minute bit. And how's this? The bit was about how I grew up in a Muslim house uh, with a Muslim grandmother who told me that she wish, uh, she um, wished that I grew up as a Muslim as well. Uh, but because I'm not, that she has to go to hell uh, for eternity <laughs> because right. her grandchild isn't Muslim. And, and I somehow decided <laughs> to try and make that funny in front of a <laughs> Saturday night crowd <laughs> at the comics lounge. Uh, this will be funny and relatable to all of the white mums and dads. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're, they're literally and suburban literally, mums in that audience. Like, oh, yeah. my Lord. And here's the thing. Like, to date, I have now... You, we talked about the competitiveness that I didn't know I had. That is at the back of my mind that one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that bit work at the Comics Lounge on a Saturday just to prove it to myself that I just wasn't ready, that the bit... The, whatever was in my mind is still funny, but I just couldn't get it out. And anyway, I bombed so hard. That five minutes was such a brutal... Because it's not only bombing, like getting no laughs is bad enough, but getting no laughs on something that's making the crowd really uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm talking about, literally one of the punchlines is about my grandma rotting in hell because of how adorable I was. Because it was like, she had this belief, but she still let me, you know, grow up in this in this house because of how yeah. cute and cuddly I was. And I was like, you think your parents have made sacrifices for you? She's, you know, she's having Satan, she's burning you know, in hell. Pork, burning in hell because of me. And, <laughs> and I bombed so bad that five minutes that that eight minute recovery never happened it was just another, <laughs> another oh, no. 13 minutes and it says the way it worked was at the back of the room where the bar is those people first start chatting then the yeah. row in front of them start chatting and then it just trickles till you have 400 people oh just... so they started talking oh man it Dilra, was i like... have never seen that at the lounge in my life yeah. of a comic yeah. bombing oh. so hard that the audience starts talking i've never I've seen s- that. i've seen it a I've couple seen it. times i've seen it I've seen it, it. I'm happens. glad to be. And here's the thing. So I, it actually the, shocked the point... me when it happened. I was like, I've never seen 400 people this un- this disinterested <laughs> in anything. Like collectively, it's... they were all like, fuck whatever we paid for. And it's crazy to yeah. watch. It's and like, that is even worse because they paid for it. They're like, yeah. oh, I'll just waste my money. <laughs> you are, yeah, no, exactly. You become one of those, you know, hotel lounge singers, you know, just they're in the yeah. background. <laughs> That's and the worst. Yeah, it, it was... 
it was such a level of rejection that I hadn't felt it was, and it, but, <laughs> since the, the last is, time you did the exfid, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that's that's different. See, this one to me was such a direct link between my own ego and the bomb. Yeah. Like it was because I got cocky. It's because I took them for granted. It's because like that thing which, which brought me here was the idea about stand-up comedy. You have to prove yourself every single time and you can't take whatever yeah. your previous achievements for granted. This concrete was such a concrete example of that first seven minutes was my most storming gig I've had. I probably had better since, but at the time, I could not believe how much I was rolling with laughter at the yeah. first seven that it went to my head and I went, fuck it, I can do this new bit. So since then, Often that's I when actually it reckon... I reckon I've never bombed on a weekend at the lounge since then. It might happen now, I don't know. But up since then, it has given me so much fear and respect for that for that. It idea makes you better. Killing. It made me heaps better. Like it made me so much better because I I would never. But because now I would do the lounge and talk about having a Muslim family and all those things. I, I'm able to tap into that side of yeah. me. Yeah. But it's because I put in the work that needs to go in before yeah. you can get there. I were as opposed to me going, oh, I kill for seven minutes. Fuck it. I'm going to talk about something that's a bit dark and heavy that I'm not really rehearsed that well. Let's see how we go. And then yeah. fucking I got my ass handed, handed to me so badly. Like I said, literally couldn't go to work on Monday because it was that <laughs> painful. And getting, getting paid afterwards for after that just, just felt so empty because it was meant to be this victorious moment for me I just, I don't, <laughs> that's right i don't you get paid don't by the guys deserve, who run it i don't even deserve this money i'm just a that's fucking funny. fraud it was it was it was a humbling and going back to that a word of humbling the idea of if you don't have humility fucking life will yeah that is through. rough if you do so badly at your dream you couldn't even go to your plan b the next morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you failed so badly at plan A that you can't even show up to plan B. You just go gone straight to plan K, which is just kill yourself. <laughs> um, wow, that's good. Yeah, what, uh, oh yeah, continue this. I was just going to ask because we're getting towards the the yeah. end of it. I wanted to ask what's next. Like, what are you now that you've done? You know, you've been killing at the festival, and you've been doing really well in Australia. Now you've gone Amazon Prime. What are you? What are you shooting for next? And Oscar, um, he's got the logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't be happy until I get the EGOT. You know what the EGOT is? What's that? That's the Emmy, Emmy, Grammys, Oscar, yeah. and Tony Awards. When you get all four, dude. I, oh, think, yeah. I think. I honestly I think, think Childish Gambino like uh, is will be the only person to ever get that. Donald Glover is the only person who has he's, done all he four. He could do that. No, no. I think Whoop, uh, Whoopi Goldberg's already ah, got it. True. Yeah, she's a stand-up. Okay. She's a. She did music. Stand-up. Ah. She did a. She got a Tony Award for something. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, Gambino okay. could but, uh, definitely do that. Hey, Donald Gambino Glover's is in with the shot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, for me, I. You know what? This is. Uh, it's. Uh, I want to get better as at writing. I've. Uh, I've realized this whole lockdown experience has been uh, a good way. It was something I was always th- thought was a, an issue that I needed to work on, and this has really confirmed it. Which is that a lot of my. Uh, p- writing on the, the material I write is written on stage so it has a lot of performance elements to it so I always right. just take a bullet point to stage and then flesh it out in front of a crowd because the pressure of bombing helps me kick into that gear yeah. so all my material really lends itself best to a live crowd and doesn't actually seem funny on paper or at least it really needs me to sell the gag so my next goal is to start getting better at actually the writing part of it and just being able to sit with my material and, you know, flesh it out here at home yeah. rather than just taking the idea out there and, and finding the, the energy from the crowd to, to make it funny rather than, you know, actually being funny on paper. So that's that's pretty much my next real goal. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was a really difficult experience when uh, I did this thing for, for Stan that's coming up where you film it at home in isolation. Is this stand-up? You just recorded your own stand-up or yeah, was it it's, something it's, it's else? A, it's a show called Lockdown Comedy Festival and there's yeah. like about a bunch of different comics doing like three to four minutes each or something like that. And you had to submit, uh, you know, your, your, your script of what you want to do and just typing out my material. I'm like, fuck, why do people laugh at this? And like, <laughs> it made me really kind of re- realize how much of my process re- relies on this live crowd to be there to give me that feedback it, because I know it works. Like I'm not even trying to be cocky yeah. about it, but I know it's funny, but I'm, I'm really second guessing how funny it is versus I, how I much I sell the gag. That's a, that's a thing that Luke and I 
do because we do the online video where there is no audience but you also do yeah. the stand up it's mm. from my view i think they're completely different things like being Agreed. funny yeah. on video with no crowd versus being funny stand up i think they're almost it's a different type of comedy. Skills. Like sometimes I'll well, have an different... idea and I go, that's not a stand-up idea. That's more for a video idea. Right, and some things right. just translate better on video and some things translate better on stage. Sometimes they both, like, obviously there's a point it's where they overlap. both work. Sometimes I'll mm-hmm. say something on my podcast and be like, oh, I should make that into a bit. That's actually pretty funny. Right, right. It's a different, it's a, Claire Hooper said it's like a different language. Like, you, yeah. it's the same, it's the same speech pad you're still using your voice and your facial yeah. expressions but you're speaking a whole different language when you're talking to a live crowd versus talking to a crowd that you don't see and you have to anticipate it rhythmically it's different mm. do you know yeah. what I mean like you, and you guys are the best examples of it because you can do both versions and you would know that it is a completely different skill set to be able to make your sense of humor translate to a single camera to an audience that you can't really know whether it's hitting or not. Yes. Whereas I feed off that. I, I, I like to. So even something, if it's a, one of my grosser bits, I, I love that feeling of pushing them away and then making them feel uncomfortable and then doing the jokes. Yeah, you can't just... really do that at all on yeah. video. Like if you if you tell a really, really gross story on stage, yeah. a lot of it is them going, uh, stop, and you going, ah, I'm going to keep going. But on video, yeah. if, if you get that, uh, stop, they might just stop watching and then yeah, you fucked totally. it. Yeah, it's, and then it's like it's you're, you're just recording yourself talking about sticking a toothbrush up your ass for no reason, you know? Like. <laughs> yeah, and it's there permanently. It's there <laughs> yeah. permanently. Because yeah. it's like, oh, man, it's like justifying your, that you thought this was a good idea so much. Like, so when I shaved my head and I filmed it, people thought that it was like a. Some people reached out and asked if I'm okay. I'm like, fuck, how much of a mental breakdown do you think I was having that I set up a camera, filmed it, edited it, put songs and everything on top of it? Yeah. Yeah. Just I just thought it was I'm like a. Mental. I just thought it was like a jackass skit, you know? Like it you was were, a sketch. Yeah. A little fucking funny little <laughs> 10 minute video. That's actually a video. really good point. If, if someone films themselves shaving their head, it's to be funny or to create content or for charity. If you your friend, especially a girl, just comes to work the next day and they've shaved their head. They need like a welfare check. If they told yeah, that's no a breakdown. one, and that's they a just Britney breakdown. Down. Yeah, it's Britney. Britney <laughs> yeah. seven. Yeah, exactly. So Britney I... didn't show anyone. She just had a bald <laughs> head one day, and the whole world went, "This bitch is not okay." <laughs> <laughs> but it's that thing. I, I would say it's just like yeah. I I, I think the. Um, just going back to the idea of yeah, like playing in front of that crowd and learning how to uh, adapt is it's a whole different skill set, and it's not necessarily something that I know. I'm not sure if I want to go down, but I know my writing is something that even when we come out of lockdown, I want to be able to look back and go, oh, hang on, this bit is better. Actually, here's this that I found really fascinating. I got a chance to speak to the guy who books the Conan O'Brien stand-up spots. Mm. Right. And he and I asked him what it is what what is it that he looks for in in terms of when he's booking, you know, stand-up spots. They're pretty much strictly like three to five minutes, aren't they? They're, Almost yeah, all yeah, of something. them. I think it's like four to five. Excuse me, sorry, I had got my own. Only like four or five Australians have done it, I believe. Uh so I think Nick Cody, Ronnie, yep. Chang, R- Becky. No, Ronnie hasn't done it. Now it goes uh, Cody, Becky Lucas, I think Becky Reese, Reese? Wilson, Tim Minchin, uh, oh, Sam yeah. Simmons, and James Smith. So there's about six who have done Conan. Okay. Uh, yeah. At least in the new format, I yeah. believe, at least. So I asked the guy what this uh, thinking behind it, and my interpretation of what he was saying was about how the audience for a Conan crowd, you cannot control. Like the there could be people who are just on holiday who got like lottery tickets or whatever it is there's yeah, never guaranteed true. it's it's a very unnatural environment for a stand up comedian for so you can't and you know you're just you, you so for example he said you're playing to the camera here but the audience is actually on your right hand side so you're oh, you're not even looking at to, them you're not even looking at them so there's a whole yeah. bunch of variables that Ugh. that change it from being so he's like you could crush at a club, but you might not necessarily crush the spot. And for him as a booker, he needs to show evidence that that if a, if the stand-up goes bad, and this is my imp- interpretation, I think I understood what he was saying, was that if the spot goes badly, he needs evidence to show his boss, Conan, going, yeah, but look how funny these jokes were. They just didn't laugh that day. 
Do you know what I mean? Right. Whereas yes. If you are someone who's pure cell, pure uh, sizzle, pure flare, yeah, yeah. And then they bomb. You can't. And uh, you can't show the evidence as you can't show the enough. script and that yeah, they yeah, laugh yeah. at while they're reading. Right. Whereas yeah, like you can't, I think, you can't show him it. It's then tank, and he kind of goes, "I thought this guy was funny." He goes, "No, he is." And then you just pass over a note that says, "Just have fun, cunt." It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was his script. <laughs> he asked him to submit his script, as he just said. But I thought that was a really good point. Yeah, that he's got to cover his ass, mm. and so he needs to see the almost the workings like you'd need in mathematics back in high school. Like mm. we don't need the answer. Just show me the work in. Show me that you put the work in. And yeah. for me, I felt like that's something that I definitely lack in my performance or my writing is that a lot of my writing, a lot of my jokes work as performance and not so much as a written gag. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the area that I think. So, I so is that a work. goal for you to go over and do some TV stuff in like you're either in America or the UK or... Yeah, are yes you, are no. you, do you want to like, do international or are you, or are you happy just yeah, yeah, being yeah. Look, big here? No, no, no. I definitely would love to do... Uh, be, uh, being international would be awesome. I would really love that because for me, the only goal when I started was to be able to do it full time. So yes. that has been ticked off. So in that weird sense, I am not... I'm not as no. I'm still hungry. I don't know. It's a hard one for me to say because on the one hand, I'm super content. Like if so, if they say, you know what, Corona has become such a big issue, we're never gonna have stand up again. I genuinely feel like fuck. All right, that sucks and that hurts, but I've I've had a crack and it worked. You know, I, I got a taste of what I wanted to do. Which it, it is off, a, yeah. an interesting plateau with like a dream where when you make a living that because that's the the only goal you really have is like man if i can make mm. it uh, buy food as a musician that's so cool mm. it's it's yeah. almost like i feel i sympathize with that of like i if this is it if i stay at this level forever that's beautiful that's amazing mm. because i can buy food and i can live off comedy and that's the dream mm. like i, I, I want to shoot way higher but if this is it Fuck, that's a win for me. Yeah, it's easy to get yeah. content. I think is like the point. It's it, like yeah, but it's so just to, me, to appreciate what you have. Yeah, right, correct, exactly. And it goes back to that gratitude thing. But at the same time, where my goals have always been has been back with process. You know what I mean? So mm. I that in terms of the one goal was to live off it, but everything else was all about how can I get better? How can I get better? What do I yeah. need to do to get better? What do I need to do this to make this story about me sticking my dick in a vacuum cleaner funny? Like that, that yeah. is like, has always been for me, at least it's been the goal. So yeah, of course, if like, if I could do a spot on Conan as someone who loved watching Conan as a kid, like it would be unfucking believable to me. It's already cool that I'm good friends with Nick Cody who has been on Conan. Like that to me is yeah. already a fucking win, like in this weird sort of way. But th that's not to say that I then have, I, I, I'm not good at planning things out. So everything that yeah. I've done that I would say I'm proud of has never been a calculated plan. It's always just gone back to how did I get better each year? So it's just yes. about like, and that's the one thing that's in my control. So I, I could, if you asked me uh, before the Amazon offer came, I couldn't have even thought of that as being an option. Like I didn't even know Amazon yeah. had a streaming service that they were looking for stand up. Any of that was like beyond me. Yeah. So I'm not a good, that is not my strength. My strength has never been about long term thinking and, and things like that, or even finding management and all that. I remember I did a workshop once uh, uh, for newer comics at, in Perth. And this <coughs> first question from the audience was, oh, how did you get uh, your management to, to sign you? I'm like, what a terrible fucking question. Like, how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's yeah. not like, how did I convince them? It's like, they come to you. It's not like, yeah, yeah, you're, exactly. it's not, you don't go into a meeting with a briefcase and go, I'm Dilrock and here's five reasons why you should sign me. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's exactly. like, they go, oh, this guy's good. We, we can, you know, essentially make yeah, money out of him. Make money, honestly. Oh, I, and I swear to God, that was it was when I started selling shows out on my own is when I got management hit me up. People don't realize like, that. You have to do something by yourself. It's, to get yeah. uh, interest from those people. You have to it's, prove that you can do it without them before they want to help you. Right. And it's something, it's advice that Ronnie Chen gave me as soon as I signed on. He said, that's great, congrats, but don't forget, they can only sell something that's that's already selling. So don't take your foot yeah. off the pedal. You keep hustling, you keep doing what you've been doing well so far because there's only so much they can actually do. Ultimately, management <laughs> can only really assist you get more of what you're already getting. Correct. Really. More Correct. opportunities and stuff. So, 
yeah and that's the thing and if you're not good at being able to get those opportunities for yourself like it's 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 like you guys uh, are great with your ability to run your own business model like and that is fucking true like amazing freedom that you have there to be able to control your audience and you know you know you you know every penny where it's going right yeah um but that was not my skill like i don't have that ability you're an accountant you're an accountant i was a <laughs> shit accountant <laughs> but from kpmg for a reason right <laughs> so so the, the the only thing that i would say i was ever good at was that i loved stand up like yeah. that's the yeah. one thing that i think i do better than most people which is the love of it and i keep going back to that idea going what can i do to make me love this more like what can i do to enjoy yeah. performing more and to always those comes back those things come back to writing and and you know pushing myself in out of my comfort zone on stage and things like that so mm. so i maybe it's lazy maybe it's a defeatist way for me to think and i'm always like if i get this part right the other bits will take care of itself do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, so, so it kind of happened with the management thing. I never really hit them up or anything like that. They came to me, uh, and then when since then, like I'm, I guess I'm privileged enough now that they look after those things, like you know, you know, looking for deals and things like that. Yeah. But while since they are using those resources, what are the things that I can do in the background that can make me better as a performer? You know. Yeah. So for me, it comes so so going back to that original question. Fuck, I would love to be on Conan for sure, but I don't know how to get there. So at the moment, let me then work on the writing thing. You know? Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's a good answer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, I just wanted to talk about, uh, people may recognize you from another show, which is uh, I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Um, I wanted to ask, like, as someone who people, it's well known that I'm fascinated with the world of reality TV. I do uh -huh. videos on The Bachelor and stuff. Uh, with I'm a Celebrity, mm. What, okay, is it real? Like, uh, you, you're in South Africa, yeah? Because yeah. there was rumors the first season that the people weren't even in the place that yes, they that said. I think I'm pretty sure that is because the British version of it is filmed in Gold Coast. Uh -huh. so, so but the they British but version, they lie and they say it's in no 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 they just say it's in the jungle in, it's not in, the in jungle the Australian outback or whatever but they film it in surface paradise that's the fucking yeah. jungle actually yeah that's I'd a hard say one that's to survive yeah a lot of wildebeest out there yeah yeah there's that and you yeah, exactly it, it's hard to escape those animals it's a terrible uh, place they, they, they've got a lot of speed on them you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I think that was where the confusion came. But okay. no, I physically flew to to Johannesburg, and then you yep. go to Kruger Park and prove it. Here's so here. There's no way to prove it. A passport. <laughs> I guess I can show you my passport. <laughs> but um, what what a, what the difference is? It's still a set. So you're in the jungle. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what Pete Rosethorn told me once at the comic sign. She goes, "Oh, there were there were plants in pot plants <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's not a jungle." So no, no. So you're in the jungle, but they've cleared it and then added like pot plants and shit like that. So, so the right. trees, when, when you show the campsite and you this see This jungle the trees looks too it, much like a jungle. Can we get rid of the jungle and then put some custom jungle in, please? <laughs> well, that, that's, a, that's apparently, as far as I know, a safety precaution. So they literally have netting that goes around to stop leopards from coming in. Uh -huh. like that. So, yeah. So they have to have like this big. Per, per, perimeter perimeter yeah. perimeter fuck that you know the word i'm looking for yeah, yeah. it's actually uh, not fencing. a not a big word um even well, i know that one <laughs> well no, in, 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 in i think in Sing sri lanka we used to pronounce it perimeter and ah, now it's perimeter yeah. there's a few words like sounds that like a nando sauce or like the gauge yeah, of does. the nando <laughs> sauce <laughs> it sounds like oh how hot is it let's check the perimeter the perimeter <laughs> <laughs> they literally have that perimeter yeah. on the sauce bottle that's so fucking funny. No, perimeter, perimeter. And there's another word that keeps coming. I think uh, psy psychology, I used to pronounce it psychology. And oh, yeah. so for me, it takes a little bit of time to always get on that. And the word avow always makes me struggle because in, in, when I speak in Singhali, or in Sri Lankan, uh, the V and the W, it, it's interchangeable. It's swapped. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. it's just, you know, it doesn't really have follow any rules. So oh, so it's not have a swapped, lot of it's just whatever. Yeah, I think a lot of Indians will say winter and wedding, you know, yeah. whereas Sri Lankans will say voucher or visa. Like it's a, it's a really, right. I, 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 it's because it's the same letter that you use for both sounds. Right. Okay, you know? that's interesting. And uh, but yeah, I so, thought so, I thought they were reverse, but it's just whatever the fuck you want, kind of. I think, 
I'm sure there are. I'm sure it's closer to being reversed than not. But I think there's some exceptions. But anyway, the point is perimeter. Uh, there's uh, there's 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 perimeter trying to stop leopards, and there's I think like rangers who are constantly on the lookout for those animals yeah, okay. getting in. <laughs> but there's only a limit to what they can do. So when we came across snakes and shit, like there was a incident where me and this other guy Ryan from uh, Maths which yeah. you have as well, I'm sure. He, uh, That's he and a I man stumbled. you want around a deadly animal, huh? You can trust him. Well, to be honest, because he lives on a farm, he fucking knows what he was talking about. Like he ah. was- I think I met him once. He's friends with my tour manager, Zach. From the, does he live in the Gold Coast? Uh, no, oh, no, Sydney? no, he lives in Goldburn. He lives in Goldburn. Oh, okay. He, it was Ryan Gallagher. So he yeah. does stand up. Because he, he didn't stand up. Touring. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he spotted the snake before anyone else could because he's constant since he was born is looking out for snakes, you know? Yeah. So he was actually really great to have around for that. But um, that was a spitting, Mozambique spitting cobra. Like, and I didn't real. I'm, I'm fucking dumb. I wanted to get a closer look, but that thing has like a six foot, you know, spitting range and it could have fucked me up. So those are the elements and that are real. And spits poison. You know I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. What was the yeah, worst totally. thing you did on the show? Because like my mum and dad watched a bit of it. I watched a bit of it when you were on, but like what mm. was the grossest thing that you did? So for me, I only got to do one challenge, which was really kind of annoying because I didn't realize that it was voted by, to go into the challenges, you know, is voted by the public. And if you have a small profile like I did, they were like, we don't care about that fucker. Let's just send in, you know, uh, Charlotte from Geordie Shore yeah. to, yeah. you know, do all this shit. And uh, so the one I did get was where I was in a fucking bingo, like human sized bingo barrel. And they kept tipping shit on you as you're trying to find fucking bingo balls to answer the questions or some shit. And um, yeah. the things that got tipped on me were like, cockroaches like these huge fucking hissing yeah. cockroaches they were fine they're just weird creepy sludge which smelled like it was fat from animals like the the, uh, the yeah. bits that are on so it just tipped on them. but the worst fuck this for a joke and i can't believe they did this was ants like actual uh some bloody exotic ant that when they tipped it you fell down the back of my shirt and then got stuck in my you know the bit where your the, the arch of your back yeah, and the ch- so they couldn't actually escape. So because they couldn't escape, they were freaking out, and they just kept piercing and biting. Oh, me. that sucks. Oh. And, yeah, and it went down my ass crack as well at one point. <laughs> and, there was, and there was bite marks right round my down here. Well, it was like actual scabs, tiny, tiny little scabs. And Jesus. so that 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 was when I went, oh fuck you! This is like you guys aren't fucking around. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's real. Huh? That, that, there was a Rhonda Birchmore got stung by a scorpion in one of the challenges and her, oh. her finger her swelled swelled up for like for days. Yeah. Like it was she literally couldn't be I'm like, she's a she's a 40, 40 year old veteran of this uh, entertainment industry, treat her like a queen. <laughs> Instead she's walking around with this but shit. But that's the appeal like, though, is yeah. yeah, I think so. But I think that's what people I think that's about why it. it is actually well there is there's a reason why it's a successful show is because it seems like the most real out of all the reality tv shows it seems like the yeah. less reality tv show it almost seems like survivor I, yeah. kind of vibes in a way well i think Sur- survivor is like it's next a, level, yeah it's a different but, thing but 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 i think the difference in this i'm a celeb is that they there's no idea of um hostility there's, there's no, no hostility drama built. between the contestants yeah. everyone's friends so the drama, yeah but if the drama happens it's very organic yeah. do you know what i mean so yeah. something like maths or bachelor or anything like that they have to create a storyline yes to well i guess also because like a villain are none of these people in reality tv generally are, are perf- like professional performers whereas i'm a celebrity uh, they yeah. are yeah. and so it's they so don't right, need right. to they don't right. need to make them be entertaining because everyone's in there trying to get Instagram right, followers yeah. anyway. And you know what I else? I know how to do this. I'm a celebrity like all you guys on that show. You've all got something to lose, like usually, right? But people yeah, on yeah. The Bachelor, they're like, if I'm the villain, I just get Instagram followers. Like it doesn't, they've yeah, got nothing to yeah. lose. So they can just be an asshole and go back to their day job. Right. And I actually think that actually undid me for the first couple of days because I could not stop that thinking in my head going, Hang on, I can't. You know, I I I I'm on camera all the time. Yeah. And you know, especially you know, we, we like to hang shit on each other uh, backstage at gigs and stuff mm. because you, we all trust each other and we go like you know for the juggler because it's fun. But when you don't know people, yeah. you can't do that. So I'm like suppressing my instinct to make fun of people uh, because they like they don't know that I'm 
you know, that's part of my way of acknowledging you and saying I like you is by making fun of you. Yeah. So that first three days, I reckon I was just stiff as a board going cameras everywhere. Cameras oh, the everywhere. first thing I, I do was- is be like, oh, Dr. Chris Brown, are you even a doctor, bro? Like, you're just hot. <laughs> it's like, you just, you got to say that to his face. Like, do you yeah. know that people, you're hired because you're attractive? Also, you're a vet. Oh. Like he, he fucking knows it. He loves oh, good. it. He, yeah. actually, he actually did an episode on uh, Utopia as well uh, last year. And uh, I got, man, we were like battling him with all these questions about animals. He was fucking awesome. Like he's, he's just got the most interesting stories. Like if yeah. he's manufacturing that shit, he's done his research. I'll oh yeah. He's, def- <laughs> he's definitely hotter than Dr. Harry, which is the only person he's competing with in the Australian That's true. Landscape. I probably yeah, wouldn't fuck those- Dr. Harry. <laughs> yeah. He's one of those people that are actually hotter in real life as well. Like, really? Like, that I makes me angry. That makes me very yeah, angry. Not yeah. many people you know that- are on TV. That was one of the most brutal yeah. things about realizing like, ooh, ooh. we used to work in radio and when you yeah. used to see celebrities walk down the corridor, you're like, fuck, makeup's a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> yeah, especially when yeah. they're coming in for radio, they know they're not going to be seen. So they're just like, well, this is just my face. It's not yeah. anyone else's. No one's done anything. It's just mine. And you're like, fuck, yeah. I've never seen I don't, don't want to throw any life. shade, but fuck, Sean McAuliffe, mate. One day he, I think life had just got the better of him one day when he came in. I, I think he's great, but man, he's, he's looked a bit overgrown looked a bit scruffy and he really well, did he looked like and uh, this is again he just came out of the jungle sta- for, for for stand-ups what is really fun is we're already on the low level like yeah. we're already <laughs> yeah you know so it's like if we do get a chance to scrub up it looks like oh my god they look great but really like our base operation yes, is always no makeup true. and just you know yeah. i think but you're crazy. used to seeing people at a higher level like seeing matt yeah. preston without his cravat just blew my mind i was like bro <laughs> you, you well. have to wear it he was wearing a hoodie i was like what the fuck is no, this respectful no that's not allowed you can't no. fucking, you can't be matt preston without a cravat that are you sure it was him? No, well, it was probably an imposter. It was just an impersonator yeah, so. who I was mean, doing Matt a really Preston bad with job. No cravat. It's like Dilruk with no toothbrush in his ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, just it's what a I'm staple. known for. <laughs> it's, what I'm known for. it's what I sell as merch afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Use toothbrushes. Oh. <laughs> Fuck, uh, Dilruk. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on the podcast. Uh, oh, it, mate, my pleasure. This has been a great so insight fun. into the uh, the world of a successful comedian, which we don't often get on this show. Mm. So. <laughs> thank you that's very lovely of you to say and um yeah hope the rest of lockdown goes well and yeah, yeah looking we'll forward to catching this. up i know let's just go let's just hang shit on each other now and just get it out of our system yeah. <laughs> we're backstage but it's just nicer when we've done material first to feel like we've got validated and then you yeah i know otherwise it just feels a little bit mean so yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, you yeah, check yeah. out dilrook's amazon prime special i mean it's not netflix but you know it's there yeah, exactly. yeah. it's very very good <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it's the it. LD. <laughs> the LD. <laughs> the LD special. Uh, no, Amazon, if you're listening, Amazon, I'm sorry. You know I love you. Mm. Uh, but what was, else yeah, have you got I, going I, on, I, Dill? Tell the uh, people. Well, my, podcast, my podcast, Fitbit Pod uh, with Ben Lomas is still, we're trying to do it in isolation. That's a lot of fun where we talk. Well, it started off him and me being 125 kilos and the first of us to get under 100 kilos gets a thousand bucks. And so it started off as a bet following that, uh, you know, the podcast yeah. following that bet. And so that's where I realized how competitive I got because there was a, a week where uh, I think it was like in two weeks, I lost 10 kilos just wow. through sheer anger. <laughs> That'll do it to you is the not wanting, the incentive to not lose $1,000 will shed yeah, the weight. Yeah, very quickly. yeah. so the, the first eight episodes cover that. And then afterwards we've had people discuss their own shit. But uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, Instagram, Dilruk J, Twitter, Dilruk J, those places I, you know, do videos of yeah. shaving my head. So <laughs> it'd be great if you can, people can follow that. Go right, check out right. Dilrock. Uh, he's a very funny man and a uh, very good friend of ours. And yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Oh, pleasure talking to you boys. Thanks so much for having me, guys. No See you worries. later. That's been See the Luke and Lewis job. show. Talk to you guys in a few days. See you later. Do you have an outro sting? Outro sting? No, we Is don't. There outro music? Oh, oh, yeah, no, oh, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I yeah. just hadn't got to it yet. I thought you were going <laughs> to say something. <laughs> See, See you go. All right. See you later, guys. <laughs>